Okay, this is a big project. So I'm definitely gonna recommend the plans for this one. Um, it's a big project. There's a lot of parts to it. It's our uh, double seat glider. Um, and the thing is, that while it's a big project, it's pretty easy to put together. Um, now we've gone through and we've cut up all of our parts. We're gonna need nine two by four eights for this project. And we are gonna have a good little chunk left over, um, about three quarters, well, maybe half a board left over out of the two by four eight. And then uh, we have a two by, I went with a two by eight. We'll talk more about this. Um, you could use some alternative materials. You could use um, two two by sixes. Um, if you didn't want to uh, use a two by eight, I build a lot of stuff. I use two by eights four. So I didn't mind buying a two by eight. Um, we're only gonna use four foot of it. So you've got a two by, four, uh, two by eight by eight um, and you're gonna have four foot left over. So you can get two gliders out of one stick of two by eight. Cause like I said, these are actually 23 and a half. Okay. Um, and then uh, we do need one two by six as well. And this one is 71 inches long. So I'm gonna go through all of the dimensions that we need and but again i'm going to really recommend the plans for this it's ten dollars you can get them on our facebook page the one thing that plans will really help you with is very very minimal waste so this bucket was empty earlier when i started and look when we use the optimized cut list that we give you in the plans that's what you have for scrap okay it's very very little waste and so we, we do take the time to figure out how best to lay all these parts out on the boards uh, to make most use of the material. So I think that'll help you a bunch. All right, so let's go through and talk about the pieces that you need. If you're going to try and do this project without the plans, this is one section of the video you're probably going to want to watch a couple of times. All right, so we need two pieces of two by four that are 77 and a half. We need one piece that's 57 and a half. And then we've got a total of 10 pieces that are 27 inches. And then of course, we talked about our, our two by eight here, which we need two of them at 23 and a half. Uh, our two by six, we need one of those at 71 inches. And then back to our two by four, we need one at 16 and a half inches. We need four at six inches. And then we need four at 12 and seven eighths. And then we've got five at 13 and a half. We have four at 15 and a half. And then we have two at 17 and a half. And then we have two at 20 and a half. Okay. So that's it for all of our boards. Now what we have to do is there's a few of these pieces that are going to need some bevels. So we're gonna put a 45 degree bevel on all of our six inch pieces on one side. And then on two of our 27 inch pieces, we need a 45 degree bevel on both sides, okay? And we'll explain why we're doing that as we kind of get to that point. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my 45 degree bevels. On, on one side of all of my six inch pieces and I'm going to take two of my 27s and do a bevel and a bevel on two of those. Okay, so I'll get that done and then we'll come back to you. All right, so now we have our, uh, our bevels added. And of course, what I did here, I just tilted my miter saw to 45 degrees and chopped them up. Not a big deal. So we've got a 45 and a 45. And these are our little feet. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn these over and these feet are gonna go like that and like that. Okay, that's, and they're both gonna be just like this. And so what I thought we would do is start with the glider assembly. It's the fewest pieces, so uh, it'll get done the quickest. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just use a couple of screws, I think, per. We are going to uh, go ahead, even though my, my screws I'm using, um, they do, they are self-drilling. See that little notch in those? But because um, these are small blocks, 
I'll probably will go ahead and pre-drill them. Um, so we'll go ahead and put those on and then uh, we can go ahead and attach our uprights. All right, so we've added our 45 degree uh, bevels on here. I just used the, the uh, table saw to do that. And so we've, we've done that on our 27 inch piece on both sides and then our six inch piece on one side. And then what we're gonna do is we're just going to use a couple of screws per foot here and attach those uh, with, with some two and a half inch screws. Now, my screws do have this little notch that uh, does not require you to pre-drill a pilot hole, but I am gonna go ahead and use my little uh, countersink and pilot bit there. Go ahead and drill those out and just use two, two and a half inch screws per, and then we can uh, go ahead and attach our uprights. Now our uprights, I am going to go ahead and use bolts, uh, some lag bolts. Um, we could, you could use screws. In fact, I may just kind of temporarily put it together. That's usually what I do. I will put it in a couple of screws just to hold it temporarily and then go back in and add, add the lag bolts uh, once, once the assembly is complete. So let me get the feet added and then we'll move on to the next step. So there you go, pretty simple stuff. A couple of screws in each one of our feet. And so that's a done dealio. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center of our board here. And then this is gonna go just like that for our upright. So it's gonna be flush on one side. And again, we'll probably, uh, we'll use three, three and a half inch screws and then I will come back in and put in two, uh, uh, it'll be two three eighths inch by four inch lag bolts uh, we'll put in there. And then that will be nice and secure for the long term. So the first thing I need to do, find the center of my board. Then we're gonna transfer that, find the center of this board, line them up and we'll use three screws. So we'll kind of, our three and a half inch screws will kind of go to the outside edge because we'll come just to the inside of those screws with our bolts, okay? So that is our next step. All right, so you can kind of see what we did here. Went from that point over, found the center, um, and then we transferred that line down, and then we found the center of our two by eight, and then we just put in one three and a half inch screw here in the center and you can see how these are kind of towards that edge and then our bolts will come in just to the inside we'll use two bolts and come just to the inside of those two screws and then what we're going to do is take another 27 inch 27 and a half inch piece put it on top and then that one is is does not have any type of chamfer or anything like that it's just a, a 27 and a half inch board. So I'll go ahead and get that done. So there we have it. Same difference, 27 inches, I came over 13 and a half. Found center, which I did at uh, three and five eighths. This is seven and a quarter. So came over three and five eighths. Put in the same three screws up top that I did down here at the bottom. And then we will go ahead and put two bolts, two lag bolts in. Um, just to kind of help sturdy it up. And I've debated about rounding over the corners or doing something. This one I'm not gonna do anything to, um, just to see what it looks like. No, the other ones I've built in the past, I've, I've always treated the ends of this top board somehow, some way. Um, but in this case, I'm not gonna do that. So what I need to do then is build one more, just exactly the same way, and then we'll use that two by six right there, that 71 inch piece. And we're gonna come up, um, I'll get the dimension exactly how far up from this point up um, we need to be to, to where that top of that two by six is gonna go into place. But we'll get there. Let me get another one of these made and then we'll put that horizontal piece in. Okay, so now we have our 
uh, glider frame pretty well done we are going to have to obviously come back in and add some hooks on the bottom side here uh, to attach our glider to one key point to make um and hopefully this will come true uh, is the the glider frame is just wide enough for us to get our glider in place um so like you know when we're transporting it you have to slide it all the way to the left or all the way to the right and it will still go in the frame one time when i built this uh, like literally i was maybe an inch off from from the glider being able to fit inside the frame so i had to modify the glider a little bit in order to get it in the frame but i think i've got it set up now where there's an inch and a half space so if we if we push the glider all the way to this side then the other end will swing over inside um, where it needs to go so hopefully that's true now i did forget a couple of pieces and i can't believe i did so in the intro i did not have these uh little wings so these are 18 inches long so remember our top board is 27. these are 18. i put a 30 degree miter on them just for looks really and of course we have one at the top and bottom and you could see on the top i put in three three and a half inch screws always use three and a half inch screws if you have the ability to so in this case we were able to use three and a half so i always use three and a half if i can and then obviously we're going to come up from the bottom and put three three and a half inch screws in that horizontal piece as well and then i like to put these on the inside because they're a little less noticeable but you can see we have those four screws at the top and we have four screws at the bottom and what that does is obviously it'll add a considerable amount of strength to this top board where the glider is going to hang but if you don't want to put in your bolts i'm going to put in the bolts i believe top and bottom i just i just like to do that uh adds a, a lot more strength but really i don't think it's really necessary especially with this extra cross bracing in at the top and the bottom i don't think it's really necessary uh, we're going to put some bolts in on the ends here too just for a little extra stability left to right okay so that like i said that is our glider frame and uh i'm gonna go ahead and put that into position where it goes um get it get it out of my way here um, and then we can look at putting together the actual glider portion i thought i would just show you real quick upside down uh, what the frame looks like upside down so what we're going to do is right basically dead center of, of what's overlapping here is we're going to put in some eye bolts. So we're going to put in four of them. And I'll show you the, the other hardware we're going to need for the actual glider part. So these are the eye bolts that we're going to be putting in. Uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the diameter, the number zeros. They're pretty thick eye bolt um, and we have eight of those and I want to say these were like a dollar fifty something like that they weren't terribly expensive and then this this is the chain that I went with um, they, they sell this uh, in this galvanized that I got but also in like in a polished chrome hey and uh, I got this at Home Depot of course you can buy it by the foot and uh, I went ahead and got eight foot. We don't really need uh, eight foot for this project because uh, we're gonna need about four lengths of 16 inches, um, roughly. But I went ahead and got a little extra. But this chain is rated 750 pound chain. So when you're picking out your chain, uh, whatever chain you wind up going with, just uh, keep be mindful of that. Uh, rating look at look at the chain rating and and make sure it's going to be suitable for what we're doing so definitely 750 pound chain um, is what I've always used and um, should be perfectly fine even for two big guys to get on it and and of course the weight of the bench itself uh, this will uh, 
definitely be be plenty big. I think the next jump up was like 1,250 pound chain, but it was a lot thicker chain. But this is what I've always used and has worked well for me, okay? Of course, these are the 3 8 by 4 inch lag bolts that we're gonna use um, to bolt everything together. I didn't actually get enough. Uh, I need, I need uh, four for each end for, to, to, for the two by eights uh, to attach to the two by fours. And then I forgot uh, the uh, two by six horizontal. I, I should have gotten two more of these. Uh, so you're gonna need a total of eight, or uh, let me see. You got two, two at the top. I, I guess I, I don't know. I guess I really I did not, was not thinking because we need, we need uh, four for each end. So we need eight. Plus then we need uh, two more on each end. So, so we need eight. We need 12 of those total. I don't know why. I'm not sure why I only got six. I was must not have been thinking. But at any rate, that's what you're going to need to put it all together. And we're going to show you that here um, in just a bit. So I think what I'm going to do is, is go ahead and mount these in place. And I'll show you how we're going to do that here. All right. So I just grabbed this drill. It had a drill bit in it. And the main thing you want to look at is look at the, the diameter of the bit compared to the diameter of the thread of your eye bolt. And you can see it's a little bit smaller than the diameter of our eye bolt. So I think that should work out just fine. I don't use it often, but it's nice to have uh, when you need it. And that's these, this half inch impact from Ryobi and my buddy, he modified a, looks like an 11 16 cent socket, took a grinder to it so we could drive in our, our eye, eye bolts really easily. He saw me struggling one day and says, hey man, I got a solution for you. And sure enough, that is the solution. Just take a, take an old socket. This is just a, it's not a craftsman or or anything special uh, socket. It's just a cheapie. And he just ground it out and that's gonna make driving those in super easy. So we'll go ahead and get that done. Now you do wanna be careful that you don't overdrive them. And uh, all I did was took a stick and just kinda went from corner to corner and made a little mark to find X marks the spot there. And then you could see we want them to be parallel with the length of the board. So you can see that one there. And you can fine tune that with a screwdriver uh, as far as getting them nice and straight and parallel if you want. You do want to be a little bit careful that you don't overdrive them because this size eye bolt uh, is exactly an inch and a half thick. So we don't obviously want them to poke out the top. But now we have all of our eye bolts in place. We can flip this back upright and actually we might want to go ahead and I think I will go ahead and put in my bolts at the bottom here now that it's upside down. So let me go ahead and get that done and then we'll move on. All right, so what I did was I put one bolt on the end for our two by sixes on either end and then put two bolts just like so. And then we drove it home uh, with our impact. We've got a uh, extension here, uh, 3 8 extension for our socket, and that's the way to go in order to uh, drive them bad boys home. And that will give you, see there's the other bolt there, that will give you a rock solid base. Normally we would go ahead and put in two bolts, um, but I put the horizontal piece in first, so that's taking up a good share of the board. So do as I say now as I do. So go ahead and put two bolts in on each end, but do it before you put that horizontal piece in place. Uh, because it doesn't really give you room for two bolts. But one bolt's plenty sturdy, but so it's fine. But uh, if you're doing it right, just go ahead and put two in. Uh, and safe side. I am kind of bummed at how expensive hardware's gotten because those lag bolts are I think we're, I 
$1.50 or something like that a piece with the washer. So, um, but at any rate, our uh, base now with all of our bolts in, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put the bolts in through the top or not. I haven't decided. Uh, only reason is I just don't like the look of the bolts, but I, I but the, the, the strength would definitely be better, I think. So I probably will do it. Um, but at any rate, that, that's uh, essentially the, the completed base. Of course, I'll turn it right side up and we'll get to working on the actual seat portion now. All right, so now we're going to work on the actual glider itself. And I think you'll find that this will come together pretty quick for us. So what we're going to do is we've taken our two 77 and a half inch pieces. And then we have two pieces that are 20 and a half. Okay. Um, and then we've measured in from the corner. We've come in eight and a half and we have a little tick mark here. And we're going to line up the outside of our board. And we're going to use two three and a half inch screws on both sides. Always use three and a half if you can. So we're going to use two three and a half inch screws, and we're going to do that to both ends are the same, the same way. Okay. So that's our first step. So we're going to get that done, then we'll come back to you. All right. So I have all of my boards in place, and let's talk dimensions. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from this point over. 18 and 3 quarter and 29 okay and notice where my board is placed also so that's important so we're not talking centers we're talking to edges okay and then over here it should just be a square but if you want to know the dimension from here to here it's 10 and a quarter and then from here to here it's 20 and a half again we'll probably just use our carpenter square and square it up so two three and a half inch screws here and so same thing uh 18 and three quarter 29 so we placed our boards in place now what i did just to verify that those dimensions are correct and you want to do this before you go nail everything down from the outside edge here to the outside edge here should be 22 inches that's going to make your seat your seat's going to be 22 inches wide so again from the outside here to the outside here 22 inches this is this is not net totally necessary but i put it in here because it's only a couple extra dollars and that will support our seat boards that's dead center of our seat okay and then the last dimension to verify if all that checks out is from the inside to inside that should be 16 and a half inches okay so once you've got all that figured out and put it into place then we can go ahead and screw it all down now there is a bit of a challenge on the back side is because we don't have clear access to put in our screws so what we're going to do is put in our screws at a at a slight angle um we, we can get it pretty good but we're going to have to do it from the top here and then we'll flip the whole thing over and then We'll, we'll screw, um, you know, kind of from, from the bottom, if you will. So we'll put in one screw at the top, flip it over, and then put in the other screw uh, to hold these in place. And you'll have, you know, easy access doing it that way. These, of course, were just blocks. They're, they're not actually in place yet. So, we, you know, when you flip it over, it will lay flat again. We'll just take these out. If we can get them out. Might take a little effort they're kind of wedged in there but anyhow go ahead and take those out there we go and then put in your screws one screw you know so you're going to come at it come at it like this which you can do pretty easy especially if you had a little bit longer extension and then flip it over and do the same thing on the other side okay we'll get all those locked down and look at our pile is getting smaller so uh we're getting there so let's go ahead i'm gonna go ahead and do all that and then i'll come back to you and we'll talk about our next step all right so now we can work on putting up our uprights so for our arms they're going to be uh the 12 and 7 8 and ideally i like to screw from the inside just so there's fewer screws showing on the outside even though these would be kind of hard to see 
But, you know, it's really a matter of personal preference. One thing you do want to make sure when you're putting these uprights in is that we make sure they're square both directions. So square this way and square that way when we... So what I would do is I would put in a couple of screws here and then what I like to do is I like to put two screws in from the front and that will make that extremely secure. So we're going to use two and a half inch screws going this way. We're going to use three and a half inch screws going that way. So these are our 12 and 7 eighths. This is what is hold our arm pieces. Then over here, we're going to use 13 and a half. And this is what will hold our table. Now our finished table will be the same height as our finished arm. Okay. When we get to that point. And then of course, we're off our work surface, but we got to put those in as well. So we'll put all these in, we'll slide it down and put those last two arms in. So there's not a whole lot of pieces left. Look at there. So we're about got this wrapped up. So let me go ahead and put all these in place and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, we're making good progress. So we have all of our uprights in place and I just wanna uh, kind of go over the screw locations for you in case you didn't understand it earlier. So there's my my arm two screws here so i put those in first three and a half and then put my two and a half inch from the, from the inside you can see those right there two and a half from the from the inside and then from the outside three and a half and what i did was just take a carpenter square and extend because you see where that one is placed so all i did was take my carpenter square right alongside that um, two by four there scribed a line in that and that's where that one sat okay so again two three and a half from this side two three and a half from that side and then once i had those in place i didn't put one here because i had a big knot right there so i just put the one there but two on the other side um but then in between these two is a 13 and a half and then two three and a half inch screws always using three and a half inch screws whenever i can and then out front here, we have this front mounted 16 and a half inch piece, two, three and a half inch screws here. And again, two and a half inch screws from the inside, three and a half here from the outside, okay? So now this is uh, uh, pretty well complete. We do have to put in our 22 inch seat slats here. They're four and three quarter wide, 22 inches long. Do you do a field measurement and double check that always because we like to, this is 16 and a half so that will take exactly three um, fence pickets wide so we have this front edge we can mount to we have this back edge we mount to and of course we overhang four inches from this front edge we overhang four inches okay and so so and the reason for that is because we have a three and a half inch cup holders and then on the bottom we put a five and a half inch piece because we're overhanging four and this is inch and a half thick. So now we're at five and a half, which is, the, the, and that will catch our drink um, when, we, when we set it down. Okay. So what I'm gonna, I think what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead and, and put my arms on. And then we have to look at uh, making the boards that go along the back for the back of our chair okay so let's go ahead and and uh, put our arms on i'll show you what we're going to do there and then because we have to modify uh, our arms are 27 inches they overhang the front of this inch and a half but we are going to round those over okay um and i think we're going to do front and back might as well um and so we're going to do that first to, to uh, two 27-inch pieces. And I'll, I'll talk about how we're going to do that here momentarily. I thought I would just show you real quick what we did. So you can see what we do. We just took a little 45-inch, 45-degree rather, uh, miter off the corners, both sides. And then that will give us, and then we just took a, our, our uh, random orbital sander and just kind of rounded that off front and back there okay it doesn't have to be perfect but yeah just round it off a little bit you can see we've already got this one end done so now we're just going to focus on this end here 
round it off and get it mounted again. Inch and a half overhang on the front. And you can see the back is more, um, and that's okay. Whatever it is, it is. Um, I, I'm not sure why I made that design choice, but I'm sure there's a good reason. In fact, I think it's because we're gonna screw in from the outside of that arm into our back piece to kind of help hold up our back. There was some reason for it. I just can't recall right off the top of my head what it was. So let's go ahead and finish this up and get it mounted. All right. So we have um, four pieces of 27 remaining. And what I did was, is I went ahead and put a 10 degree miter on all four of those pieces. So our back is gonna lay back 10 degrees. Now you can modify that you might want your back to lay back 15 degrees, somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees uh, is what I usually do. And when we mount this uh, glider to the, ba to, the, to the base frame, we might even tilt it back another 10 degrees as well. So it just kind of depends on uh, exactly what we're gonna do here. But so these pieces here, I've added that 10 degrees and then I've come up from that point 26 and 1 8 okay and that's the dimension that i committed to we'll understand why we committed to that dimension uh here in just a bit but so that's what it's going to be now we have to modify this area here on the bottom in order to fit properly in our hole where we need it to fit okay so just kind of keep that in mind these over here that are still the full 27 inches long, but with that 10 degree miter, we are going to um, fit those uh, basically in place. So we're gonna we're gonna scribe those to fit, and I think that's the safest way to do it, rather than um, you know cutting those to a specific dimension. We're just gonna fit those in place, and you'll see how all this is gonna work here momentarily. So our next step is I'm gonna get some tools out and we're gonna we're gonna modify this little area down here with some some additional angle cuts okay all right so I've made the mark that we need um, right here so we're gonna come down so now this is the long end what I'm gonna call the long end of this board 26 and an eighth long overall but uh, so on the short end of the point we're gonna come down two and seven eighths and then I just took my little Swanson speed square and then just a 90 degree angle. And that should allow us to fit it right into that pocket where we need it, okay? Now, I, I don't know 100% if that's gonna work, but that will, it's what the computer says. So we're gonna cut it at that and then try and fit it into place and see, see how close we get. So there you go. And that actually worked out really good. So if you look at it, I don't know if you can really kind of tell, but the plane, you know, where that angle is coming is, you know, relatively the same. It's almost spot on. And so that's really exactly what we needed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in from the front here uh, with three and a half inch screws. We're gonna come in the side here with two and a half inch screws. And if you look here, there's a gap at the bottom, but up top, I, I don't think it's gonna hurt us anything to put a three and a half inch screw towards the top, okay? But we're gonna, now back over here, all we're gonna be able to do is put our two and a half inch screws here because we don't have access to this from the front. If you wanted to, we could probably try and come in from, a, from the corner, and I think I just might, just for a little extra stability. Um, come in from the corner with some three and a half inch screws just to help that a little bit. Again, one from the back side here. Okay, so we'll just come right in here uh, just like that with some uh, two and a half inch screws. And you can see by looking at this board, we can come in right here and still catch, still catch this towards the top of the two and a half and then maybe even a couple down here as well. So we can, we can attack it from both ends. So if we put two at this angle, then what we'll do is we'll put two at the opposite angle, um, kind of a crisscross, and then one up here just to hold that all together, okay? So that will work out. Um, I guess I don't have enough of these cut now that I think about it, because I only have two and I need two more. 
So uh, I wasn't thinking about that. So yes, we're gonna have to cut two more 27s. Hopefully I've got enough stock on hand. I think I do. Um, so if you rewind the video, uh, however many 27s I told you to cut, we're gonna need a couple more. Um, and you'll see why here momentarily. But let me go ahead and get, I'll go ahead and cut these down to 26 and an eighth and do the same two, uh, two and seven eighths cut, the little angle cut that gets us our, our back at, at an angle. And then um, I'll come back to you and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so let's, let me go ahead and show you what we did, cover it all. Um, so with this upright here, we did go ahead and put in two three and a half inch screws this direction, two three and a half inch screws in that direction. Then on the back side, I went ahead and used the one screw on the back side. And then we've got two screws on the inside here. And then same thing over here, a screw on the back, two on this side. We put one screw up here, two and a half. And then down here, we put two more two and a halves. And now this is gonna be absolutely rock solid. So we did the same thing over here. You can see with the one screw on the back and then around the front here, we did those two in the corner, three and a half, three and a half. So again, those are dead strong. Very, very, very sturdy. Now for our back here, the plans call for this piece to be 17 and a half and you see them sitting over there, but for whatever reason, this measures 18. So if this measures 18, then that has to be 18. And that's a bobber. Now to be fair, I did not measure this distance. Um, so I do not know, let me just do it quick. I suppose it's possible I got off somewhere along the line, especially if this one is, see, that one's 17. So that makes sense, possibly. If that's 18, that's supposed to be 17 and a half. We're losing the half over here. We're gaining the half over here. My bad. So somewhere along the line, I must have gained a half inch. Um, well, the good news is, one of those will work for this because we can just cut it to 17. The bad news is we have to cut us a piece of 18. Now, remember earlier I was talking about the scribe. So I've taken a piece of 27 inch, 10 degree miter, and then I'm just gonna scribe right here on top and make those two even, okay? So I wanna put in my horizontal piece first so I can screw from the outside and then we'll fit this piece in put in a couple screws along the way just to fill that gap. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come from the outside and, and, and be able to screw in uh, through here, through the arm. We'll catch this, which is in turn gonna catch that. So again, right through here, three and a half, we're gonna sink that three and a half a little ways into this, which will be connected to that, which will hold it all together, okay? So we're getting close. So let me go ahead and add those other boards. We're gonna cut one of those down to 17. We're gonna cut us a new 18. And then we're gonna scribe these and get those in place. All right, there we have our frame pretty well all put together. So what I need to do at this point is go ahead and put in our eyelets, uh, our eye bolts like we did for our base. So we're gonna do that. Um, we, we do have to um, make a small adjustment. We're gonna get the grinding wheel out. We're gonna make a small adjustment to those eye bolts in order to put our chain on there. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna cut up our chain. Uh, also figure out approximately how many lengths we're gonna need. Our, our uh, frame, sits about two inches taller than this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from here to here, figure out what that dimension is, and add four inches to it. And I know that'll give us plenty of length of chain to make any adjustments we need. 
And I think I'm gonna come in about, oh, I don't know, maybe three inches. We'll figure out where that is, where three inches is, maybe two inches, I don't know. I'll, I'll tell you when, when I actually get them in place. And then what else we gotta do? I know these boards here, it's gonna take three pieces of picket. And basically we're gonna start the picket right there at the, at the edge, on the back edge and come out. And so if we make them 28 inches long, three of them 28 inches long, that'll give us a four inch overhang um, in doing that, which is what we need. And then because of my goof up, I'm going to measure what this distance is in the back and, and fit those properly uh, in place. Now on the back here, we're gonna start our five and a half inch picket however wide this is, we're gonna start at the top and do four of them down and wherever it ends, it ends. And then from the back edge, we're gonna do four pickets out, but those are, are uh, four and three quarter uh, wide. So we're gonna rip those. So we're gonna get this dimension, rip them four and, and three quarter, and we're gonna start them from the back and when we come out front, it should give us a half inch overhang. Okay. And then essentially it's complete. So let me uh, get the eye bolts out. We have to cut them in order to get the chain on them. I'll show you what we're gonna do there and uh, figure out exactly where they're gonna, how far in we're gonna come from the end to place them exactly. I think, Two and a half or three inches is what I'm what I'm thinking, but we'll we'll figure it out. I'll give you the exact dimension, and let's we'll see if we can't get it in place. And we're just we're real close to finishing this one up. All right, so I've got my eye bolt clamped to my table here. Got the beaming clamp. These actually are pretty good for a cheap clamp from Harbor Freight. I, I don't I have no complaints. Um, but anyhow, we want to take off just enough to get our chain through that loop. And I'll explain in more detail why that is, but that might even be a bit strong. We need just enough taken off to slip on our chain. So let me go ahead and cut that off and uh, we'll go from there. All right, so you can see, I went ahead and cut my chain and what I did, uh, I left it a little long. Give me a, give me a couple, uh, four or five extra links. Um, but as you can see, what I was talking about previously, we need just enough room to get our chain on. So that's about right. I mean, you could have, could have made it a little bit shorter, uh, but we'll see what we're gonna do. But anyhow, this worked out to be 16 links. So if you're going to Home Depot like I did to get your chain, the 750 pound uh, chain, it, it worked out to be 16 uh, links. So what I did is I cut me four pieces that are exactly 16 links right there. And that's how much I had left over out of the eight foot that I bought. So I probably bought an extra foot, um, basically. Um, so anyhow, all we're gonna do now is we're gonna drill just like we did before, drill a pilot hole for our eye bolts. And then we're gonna go ahead and install the eye bolts. But um, I have to cut the rest of them. See there? So I'll have to cut the other three, just like I did this one, before we can install it. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll get them installed and come back and show you what we did. All right. So we have our eye bolts in place now. I did come in two and a half. That's the magic dimension, two and a half. And you can see what I did. So we cut, we cut the eye bolt so we get our chain on but then we drove it down so far, but now this chain cannot come off. This is, you can see this one too. It's flush there, it's permanently mounted. So we used our magic socket to drive those eye bolts all the way down. But you can see all the way around, you cannot, we cannot get, the chain will not come off. Okay, because that, that is touching at every spot. And notice that these are straight, just like they are on our frame. Now, what we didn't do earlier is we did not cut that little notch like we did here on our frame. Um, but now this, uh, we'll want to be able to put this on and off the frame 
if we have to move it or transport it. It's a little bit difficult to trans. You can. It's just super heavy, and um, with it swinging, uh, it's easier to take it off. So we're gonna, we're just gonna nip, just like we did here. We're gonna nip a little bit off so we can get this chain on and actually hang it on our frame. So we're gonna go ahead and get that frame in place and we're gonna go ahead and put this on the frame and then uh, we can put in our tabletop boards, our cup holder board and our seat and our back boards, okay? So let me get it on the frame and then I'll show you what it looks like on the frame. All right, so we got it together here and what we did at this moment, what we've done is we put it on the ninth link, okay? Um, now, um, it's not sitting on level ground, so it's not 100% level, but it's pretty, pretty close. But what we might consider doing, uh, first of all, one thing I wanted to point out was how far, you know, we have for it to glide. So there's plenty of clearance. I do want to double check the height of the seat. Really, the seat height normally is 18 inches, but on a glider, I kind of had the idea to set it at 16. So like a, a standard dining table uh, is 18. Actually, you can see the chairs behind. If you look where that seat height is on those chairs compared to the seat height on the glider as it sits. Uh, but one thing we can do uh, is on the back side, we could, so right now, all corners are at nine links. But what we could do is change that. So we could tip the back down, so the back could be sitting at 10 degrees too. And that's usually what I would do. So I might put the back at, uh, I, might, I might ultimately raise it up to two links, uh, because this looks a little low to me, but we'll double check that. So we might put that at seven and put the back at 10 links and that'll kick it back just a little bit. You can see that the arm is more or less parallel to the frame, which is fine. Uh, but what that tells us is the seat is more or less sitting completely level. So if we wanna just tilt the seat back just a pinch, we could, but keep in mind that that is also gonna tilt back our tabletop. Um, so if we put a pen or something and it was at an angle, it would roll back, okay? So that's just something to consider. But of course our cup holders our, our, our drinks won't spill or anything uh, because, you know, they'll, they'll actually have a place to sit. So that is the basic frame. So now all I have to do is, again, this top board here uh, going this way, three of them at uh, 28 inches, one at 16 and a half for the bottom of our cup holders. And then I have to measure what this distance is here measure the distance for the seat. Same thing over here, because I got my dimensions off, I think by a half inch. Uh, so in theory, this is probably 22 and a half. Gained an inch, we lost a half, and this should probably be 21 and a half. But at any rate, we'll fix it. And, uh, but you can see it's more or less complete. So I'm just gonna keep going here, go ahead and get those boards added, and we'll go from there. There you go. That's basically the finished product. And that's basically what we had to do. So on this side, 21 and a half inch boards for the back and the seat. And then on this side, it was 22 and a half. Luckily, it's only a half an inch, so it's barely noticeable. So that's good. You can see we got that bottom board that will catch our drinks. So those are three inch holes, which is kind of the standard uh, for a bottle of beer or can of soda type situation. And uh, as far as the gliding action, you can see it, it will glide quite, quite significantly. Um, the, the distance, uh, like you cannot swing hard enough to hit that, uh, that upright. And it's rocking like that um, because it's on uneven rocky ground. Uh, otherwise, you know, you get a nice smooth uh, gliding action when you're 
rocking back and forth. And there is room for height adjustment so you can uh, raise or lower it. Um, with a glider, you tend to want it just a little bit lower so you, your feet can touch the ground easier to, to push you back and forth. But that's basically all there is to it. Now, I don't have the cap on yet, but I do like to put a cap on just so I don't see the ends of these boards. I'll just use a piece of picket. This is four and an eighth wide. So I'll rip a picket to 22, 22 inches, if you do it right. In my case, I'll have to do 22 and a half. Um, and, and just put a little cap piece on there. But you can see uh, how nice they really do look. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Um, the plans will help out immensely, I'm sure. Um, to clarify anything that, that I may have misspoke throughout the video but if you have one of these on display i promise you they will absolutely sell these uh you know you, you can't go to home depot or lowe's and find these so um so at any rate uh that's really it for this one so just to, just to kind of to recap it took us nine two by fours so the so as far as the cost analysis goes uh, I would I would factor in about thirty dollars for hardware, and it took us nine two by fours, one two by six, and then really a half of a two by eight um, to build this. So, and and I sell these for two eighty nine. That's what I sell them for. So uh, I feel that's a good price to the customer. There's a good markup and profit for us. And once you've done a few, uh, they're you know fairly easy to put together so that's it for this one thanks for watching